How will the Snapdragon 8 Elite leading version powered Red Magic 10S Pro stack up against four of the best ultra Android flagships in five different benchmark tests, where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. All five devices are powered by the three nanometer Snapdragon 8 Elite chipset, but only the Red Magic and Samsung are rocking overclocked versions of the chip bringing their prime cores up to 4.47 GHz. The Samsung, Oppo and Xiaomi use LPDDR5X RAM, while the Vivo packs in 5X Ultra RAM, and the Red Magic sneaks in LPDDR5T RAM. The Samsung has UFS 4.0 storage, and the rest use UFS 4.1, but the Red Magic steps things up with 4.1 Pro. All of them have 120Hz LTPO displays, except for the Red Magic, which has a dynamic 144Hz refresh rate. They've all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes, with the Red Magic taking things a step further thanks to its physical cooling fan. Today we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 3D Mark Solar Bay, and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite. And in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. Can the latest Red Magic flagship take on some of the best ultra smartphones that 2025 has to offer? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're going to be having a look at their current battery percentage at the start of the test. Of course, we'll compare this at the end of the test. We'll also be measuring their temperature using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5 and a room temperature of around 18.7 degrees Celsius. We'll be testing our temps between each benchmark test, but right now they've all been sitting idle for a while and the Red Magic seems to be the hottest and the Samsung the coolest while well, just chilling idle for a couple of hours. Now, our first benchmark test is Antutu, which pretty much tests everything. See CPU processing, GPU power with a base test and a demanding test, memory testing for ROM and RAM speed, and user experience testing for optimizations, PDF and image processing, and even video editing and rendering. But instead of rambling on about everything in the test, I thought I'd chat to you guys about what makes each phone stand out to me. So let's start with the Red Magic. The Red Magic is a phone for those of you who are into gaming because it has liquid metal on its CPU and it has a physical cooling fan, so it should keep things cooler. It also has dedicated game triggers and it can output to a 4K 144Hz external monitor. Not to mention it has a massive battery as you saw earlier and it has that all screen design with no punch hole cutouts at the top but it does have subpar cameras. It's a flagship through and through and is probably one of my favorite phones to game on, but the rest of the devices here will be my go-to phones when it comes to camera and just general day-to-day -day optimizations and using them on the daily. In terms of cameras, the Vivo, Oppo and Xiaomi stand out, but the Vivo has impressed me the most with its 200 millimeter telephoto extender lens, Samsung for its software support and Oppo for its tiny bezels and ability to communicate with Apple devices because it can natively airdrop to Apple devices using an app within the phone. It's rooted into the phone, which is really, really cool. When it comes to temperatures after Antutu, the Samsung gained the least temp in degrees Celsius. The Xiaomi gained the most and the Red Magic got the hottest, but it's idle temps before starting were the highest. The Red Magic has a lot of cooling tech built into it though, so it tends to dissipate heat more, which leads to hotter outside temps. This isn't actually a bad thing, it just means it's dissipating heat correctly while it performs at its absolute best. The next benchmark we jumped into was Geekbench 6, which primarily focuses on single and multi-core CPU speeds. In case you didn't know, the pro versions of the Vivo and Oppo run Dimensity chipsets. Only these Ultra variants use Qualcomm chips, but unfortunately these Ultra models are only available in China and only run on China ROM. It's totally normal for temps to drop off the Geekbench as it's not as long or as demanding as Antutu. But if temps drop by a lot, like with the Xiaomi here, it's usually a good indication of throttling, which means the device has lowered performance to prevent overheating and cool itself down. Overall, the Red Magic is still the hottest and the Samsung is still the coolest. Our last three benchmark tests are within 3D Mark. This first test, Wildlife Extreme, is a mobile bench rendered at 4K. Then we'll jump into Solar Bay, which is a ray tracing bench, since they all pack in hardware accelerated ray tracing. And lastly, we'll run Steel Nomad Lite, which is rendered at 1440p resolution and is intended for lightweight PCs. Since each test is just a minute long, we'll record temps after all three of them. All of these phones have an integrated Adreno 830 GPU, by the way, which runs at 1100 megahertz, but the overclocked chips in the Red Magic and Samsung boosted up to 1200 megahertz. 
The RED Magic also has a dedicated gaming chip called the RED Core R3 Pro, which enhances performance and effects while taking some of the load off the Qualcomm chip, so it should have the upper hand in graphics testing, which is what 3D Mark focuses on. Now I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but I've set the RED Magic to Rise Performance Mode, even though it also has a more powerful Diablo mode. The reason for this is because when I reviewed the device, I noticed that the benchmark scores were higher with Rise instead of Diablo, so I guess it seems to offer a better optimal performance in Rise. Like I mentioned earlier, the Xiaomi may have throttled a bit, but due to the advanced cooling system found inside the Red Magic, it rarely ever throttles. However, I thought it was worth mentioning that I did notice the Red Magic dim its screen quite often. I guess this is its safety net to prevent throttling and still maintain good performance. After all three 3D Mark tests, the Red Magic was again the hottest and this time it gained the most temp. I guess its GPU and dedicated gaming chip were running at peak performance. Surprisingly, the Xiaomi ended the coolest and actually dipped a bit in temperature. In my experience, Xiaomi devices tend to throttle quite a bit and usually end off with the hottest temps. This time though, the 15 Ultra did throttle a little bit, but oddly enough it actually ended off the coolest and gained the least temp from start to finish. The Red Magic ended off the hottest, but the Vivo actually gained the most temp overall. When I tested out the previous Red Magic, the 10 Pro, in the same test, it reached 71 degrees Celsius and gained 38, so there is definitely a huge improvement here. Usually phones that run hotter land up with higher scores, but in turn they suffer when it comes to battery drain, which is exactly what happened here. The Vivo drained by the most, but since the Red Magic has the largest battery, it landed up with the worst milliamp hour per minute reading, though the Vivo wasn't that far behind. When I tested out the Red Magic 10 Pro before, it had an even worse drain, so again things seem to have improved for Red Magic here. It's no surprise to see the Samsung as the most efficient device here, but I was very taken back when I saw the Xiaomi come in as a close second. Usually Xiaomi's have lackluster battery performance. But that great battery performance from the Xiaomi and Samsung resulted in them placing 4th and 5th in Antutu. The Oppo only scored slightly better than the Xiaomi, but the Vivo absolutely dominated and it's not even running an overclocked chipset. The Red Magic still came out ahead in GPU performance though, but when it comes to single core CPU performance in Geekbench, the Red Magic took the lead, putting it ahead of the Vivo, which beat the Samsung, which uses an overclocked chip. The Oppo and Xiaomi really weren't far behind though, so I guess the Xiaomi didn't really throttle much after all. When it comes to multi-core scores, the Oppo and Xiaomi still trailed the rest, but this time the Samsung took the top spot, though it barely beat the Red Magic. The Red Magic quickly reclaimed its lead in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme thanks to its overclocked GPU and dedicated performance chip, but the Vivo was a very close second, coming ahead of the overclocked Samsung. It was a similar case in Solar Bay, but this time the Oppo pulled ahead of the Samsung. It seems like something might be holding back the Samsung's performance. All the placements were exactly the same in Steel Nomad Lite, with the Red Magic claiming another victory. The Vivo right behind it, the Oppo once again beating the Samsung and the Xiaomi coming in last. After averaging their placements with Geekbench split in two, the Red Magic placed first overall, then the Vivo came in second, followed by the Samsung, Oppo and then the Xiaomi. Overall, the Red Magic seriously impressed me. It kept things cooler than its predecessor, had better battery efficiency and received higher benchmark scores. The Xiaomi may have placed last, but all of its scores weren't far off, it barely throttled, kept the coolest and almost matched the Samsung in terms of battery life. But I was most impressed with the Vivo X200 Ultra here. It doesn't have an overclocked chip, yet it managed to keep up with the performance-driven Red Magic 10s Pro. As always, this is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.